Good afternoon, morning, evening, or night, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode 141 of the JAR Media Posit Act. I'm your host, Alex. I'm joined to my right, my immediate right, by uh, Jim. What's up? Nice, nice intro there, Jim. And to my other further right, James. James. Who is there? And he is there. Uh, before we go into the show, just a, the what do you call it? Bookkeeping, housekeeping, I don't know. whatever. Um, if you want, if you listen to us on iTunes or Spotify, that's maybe possible. And by the kind people on Patreon, so head over to the Jar Media Patreon. There are links in the description and all about just Patreon. Just search Jar Media and you'll find us for that one. So thanks for all those people. Anyway. We're here, everybody. Yo, what is up? Let's do our little uh, jar rap that we always do. Yo, what's up, everybody? I'm here to say that we're Jar Media, best podcast today. Game on. <laughs> <laughs> that was sick, guys. That needs to be like a breakout thing. Yeah. It's true. We're making content on our content-making platform. I feel very nice because I've got a new jacket. It's a lovely jacket. <laughs> Those listening won't be able to see it, but just imagine the most epicest jacket you've ever seen. And, and then there it is. the opposite of that. Anyway. Oh! Jim trolling me earlier. Sending James messages saying, oh, Alex got this new jacket, it makes him look gay, man. Hey, I would never say that. I'm pro-gay rights. He didn't say he didn't say you look gay, he just said you're a gay boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, a bit what? different. Nothing wrong with that. No, you know, well, absolutely. No, not. In fact, in I'm fact, actually looking proud. looking like a gay boy is a good thing. It means you're well groomed. You know, you're just awesome all around. That's kind of homo like, homo racist or whatever you call it. Yeah, it's probably a bit homo racist, but here at Jar, we're a number of things, including that. I don't think we are. We're not homo racist. You might. You be. just called us homo racist. Oh shit! Um, delete. <laughs> You're throwing us in the frying pan, Alex. Uh, anything, anything uh, considerate happen <coughs> in, in the last time since <coughs> you recorded? Over the last week, there's been many things that have happened. What is what is wrong with you? You sound like you're a corpse over there. It's because I'm. It, I've I've had an illness. You Nobody have an knows illness. What's, <laughs> what illness? I've just had it. A cold. You got the man flu. I've got the man flu. I uh, I couldn't talk yesterday, but today. No, <laughs> not a polar bear. Today I'm good and I can talk and I am absolutely fine. But this week has <laughs> been a very big week for many things. Being, those being. <laughs> <laughs> things Americans aren't going to care about, which is just English politics and how bad oh, Brexit right. well, is. Well, we're not going to talk about that, so don't worry about that. Jim! Yeah! Um, that was quite <laughs> scary, but... <laughs> Listen, I've I've been ascending to an ethereal state as of recent. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. James, how do you sleep? Okay, I sleep, I get into bed. Normally, you know, wearing underwear, because I don't wear clothes, because that's uh-huh. stupid. Um, you know, plug in the iPod, the headphones into the iPad. Hit you up. still have that original iPad? The iPad's going fucking strong. That is a fucking nice. brick. You know how many times that's been like thrown against walls and just like kind of abused. That's brilliant. Every anyway, single day sorry. it pops up saying your iCloud hasn't been synced in like 400 <laughs> days, but that's going strong. But yep, plug in some ASMR, fall to sleep. Doom, done. So James okay. listens to ASMR. Want to know what I do? Yeah. My sleep schedule goes as follows. I usually go and do a poo. Then I <laughs> go into my bedroom. I chuck on my... I've got one of those lamps where you hold the button and it kind of simulates sun going down. I chuck on my lamp. Um, Pull back my sheets. Just wriggle in bed. Just wriggle on in. <laughs> then I do that thing where I just kind of sit on my on my knees. And sort of stretch. You sit on your knees. <laughs> yep. Then I just stretch out and... Oh, mama, I just go crazy. 
And then I then on my then on my iPad instead of putting on ASMR, I put on what's the app called? I can't remember. Oh, it's basically ASMR. It's not. It it's not at all. I remember you used to always listen to um some app like rain rainymood.com yeah. was my go-to before but now i just have an app that has that feature so well ditching rainy mood i'm ditching rainy mood because you need internet for that with mm. the app you can just play it whenever you want wherever you want okay and then i i have i have no trouble going to sleep well i've f- since since i can remember i have had trouble sleeping not not sleeping, but getting to getting sleep. Getting to sleep, the process of winding yeah. down. It always, I've, I've always moved from my right side to my left side to my right side, just thinking like about stuff like New Vegas, what I'm gonna do in New Vegas the next day. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm just browsing old YouTube before doing the dishes the other night, and I see a video: how to fall asleep in two minutes. Mm. Navy approved, army approved, legit strategy. Two minutes. That's two, crazy. Two minutes. Okay. Okay. So what you do is, <clears throat> you have to lie flat on your back. Yeah. And why are you looking at me like this? Because I'm really intrigued. No, I'm, I'm interested in both. <laughs> yeah. Because I've I've seen those stuff and it's all like that's a load of shit. That can't work. This, I, I didn't think it was a load of shit. I just thought, this. I mean, this might work. It might not. Whatever. Okay. I'll. I'll I'll, tr- I'll give it a go. So you, you lie on your back, and then you focus on your face, r- relaxing your face. And like if you feel on your forehead that you're frowning while lying in bed, you relax your forehead. Mm-hmm. If you're sort of straining your eyes to like keep them closed, you just relax your eyes, mm-hmm. etc. all over your face. Then you do your arms, make sure your shoulders are low down, mm-hmm. and your arms are all relaxed. And then... Same with your legs. Does this video? Do you watch the video to do it? Does it go? No, no, no. I just watch the video once. Now you know how to do it. Yeah, it's okay. simple as. And then, once you're in this relaxed state, you cast your mind off to a boat on a lake. Okay. On a clear summer day. Mm-hmm. And then you're just there, right? Yeah. Lying down, looking up at the sky. Yeah. And um, every time your mind wanders, you say in your head, "Don't think." So okay. you're just wiping away everything yeah. from your brain. And I, when I first started doing it, I'm like, nah, this is fucking bullshit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't think. And uh, yeah, suddenly <coughs> you're in a dream going, what the? <laughs> no, suddenly, like, I feel like I've shrunken in, inside my own body. Like I'm a smaller version of myself in my body. Right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm wearing a, a suit of my body and everything has like a delay. Like, my thumb touches my leg. Yeah. My leg doesn't feel it, but my thumb does. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, I've done this for four nights. Not once have I fallen asleep from it, but Mm -hmm. now I just do it for the experience. Okay. This just solemn emptiness. So so it doesn't work, then? (laughs) Well, it says um, none of the, like, Navy men that use this can do it instantly. You've got to do it for, like, 20 nights in a row. Until you can start just two minutes falling asleep every time. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. So I'm sticking with it, but honestly, it's entertaining. <laughs> and, the, and the places your mind goes when you're telling yourself not to think mm-hmm. seem to be way more interesting. And you also told me, and on the inverse, you've had trouble waking up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so tell the people about this life hack, if you still do it or not. So, when you when you first wake up, the second like you're awake, you sit up on your bed, and then you go, yes, <laughs> like you've just scored a goal in football, and supposedly that that helps you feel awake. And I think it's a load of horse shit. I've done it like three times, and then I'm just like, oh, lie back down, <laughs> sleep for another four hours. That's that's interesting actually because. I would say scientific, not scientific, I don't know, scientifically, soldiers and people like being able to sleep like that is like something they must be able to do in like a yeah, conflict. Yeah, exactly. It, they need to be able to It's especially that. important for the Navy because like these these boats that they have like people flying off on, when you're flying a plane, you need to be alert. Yeah. A- apparently some like 
Navy soldiers will sleep for 16 hours a day until they're needed. So whenever they're, they're needed, they're fresh. All right. They would in, like, in a war and all that. It's just like they need to be at 100% as soon as they get up. And soon yeah. As soon as they enter it. So they, they get up and go, yes! And <laughs> run to their plane and shoot some Nazis or whatever. Well, that going back to that thing about going to sleep that way, I remember m- maybe year nine, year 10, everyone was talking about lucid dreaming yeah remember that it's all it it is a similar way you do it isn't it you have to lie on your back go mm-hmm. completely limp and you're not supposed to not move anything mm-hmm. and you're supposed that's, to, yeah yeah that's that's what you end up doing there with this strategy and it is really quite strange what i find really weird specific to me when i try to imagine myself on this boat i can't not imagine the boat tipping and me falling into the water. Really? It's really... St- or, j- or just imagining a boat on some water. I can't not see it tip. Yeah. But there are... I can't remember in the video. The the other one is you're in a hammock in just a pitch black room. Like a black velvet hammock. Um, That reminds me of... um, <laughs> Hypnotherapy? Mm. Because like... A year or two ago I went to... Hypnotherapy therapy when I was like extra stressed. Or whatever see what it was like um and it was kind of similar to that the the concept is it's not like you know the pokemon hypno with his Mm -hmm. stopwatch or whatever the idea is to sort of get you into a a relaxed state distract your mind and then sort of reprogram your subconscious mind that does most of the things you do in a day um (laughs) So, you know, when you're driving, a lot of the time it's subconscious. What you're, you're not thinking about changing every gear, changing pedal from brake to accelerate. And that, th- those little details, things like that, is an idea, unless you're James, of um, like a subconscious <laughs> I de- They mind. definitely aren't subconscious to me. I'm, well, I how about a, a subconscious about detail when driving would be, you know off by heart the way to get home from work. Yes. You don't even have to think about it. That's That's your subconscious mind taking taking charge because it doesn't it doesn't need to waste brain power doing it because it just knows um so yeah that's kind of similar to what i experienced with that as well yeah and the the most annoying thing about this strategy for me so far is that i feel myself getting really close to falling asleep Mm -hmm. i remember when i tried to lucid dream it was the same Mm -hmm. thing like right there but then your mind starts to trail again and you're like don't think but it it's never enough. I've never really had a problem with sleep in this thing. Like, I just... Recently, what I've been doing is, like, I go to bed quite early now. I just lay mm. in bed, listen to ASMR, and it's just like... You just close your eyes, it just happens. Like, if you don't think about it... Yeah, anything, I don't think I've like ever that. really had much trouble. There was, I think there was a time I was when I was doing a lot of, sort of, video editing late at night and stuff. Um, but then I discovered that app called Flux... F L U X dot X or something. Um, a lot of like phones, a lot of like phones, and um, I think Windows does it now anyway. But it kind of dims the screen as the sun sets, so the the light isn't as piercing off a mm. bright white monitor. So if you're on like a Word document or whatever, it's not blinding in the dead of night and sort of hurts your eyes if it's like eleven o'clock and the sun should be in. Very, very interesting thing, though. Like, I reckon um, the secret to being able to fall asleep is being physically tired in some way. Mm. If you're physically tired, if you've gone for like a huge walk or whatever, if you've been busy, you tend to just want to be like, "God damn, I'm tired," <laughs> kind of shit. But I found out a crazy fact the other day. Go on. Yeah, about. It's a complete tangent. It's nothing to do with any of this. Okay. To do with um, astronauts. Okay. That I never, I'd never considered. So apparently, when you're in space, obviously there's no gravity pulling you down. Um, when you're in a spaceship, you know, <laughs> a space station yeah. or whatever. Um, so y- your bones aren't all being held down to the ground. So you gradually sort of stretch when you're in space. So you actually get a bit taller. While you're in space, yeah. Yeah. So astronauts have actually have to build yeah. 
the suits mm -hmm. are slightly bigger to make space for when they stretch in space yeah. that little bit. I watched a video recently that was um like 10 facts yeah. about astronauts that might be true, might not, and this real astronaut says them, and that was one of them. Because p people thought that when you stretch in space and then come back to Earth, you stay stretched. <laughs> so every, like every time you go to space, you become taller and taller. Taller and taller. But no, it's obviously because <coughs> there's not gravity. Yeah, there's nothing right. squidging you together. That's nuts, man. I reckon sleeping in space, going back to sleep, would not be easy. Because you've really? got to strap yourself into that thing on it's the like, wall. It's like, a, it's like a fucking, um, what are they called? Sleeping bag just strapped to a wall. Yeah. And you just got to get into it. How can it's not like the closest against your skin, though? It's like, well, I don't know. It must be it. very weird, wouldn't it? It must be like sleeping while falling. You know, that weightless feeling. Yeah. I mean, just, just the, the idea of being in zero gravity is incomprehensible enough anyway. Yeah. And you can't do that tactic that I just said. So astronauts are fucked. You can't lie on your back and... Yeah, because you can be lying on your back, but be in the air. Upside down. <laughs> I reckon it'd be super fun, though, to be in it'd zero It'd be gym. fun. It's just like your bedroom is like a fucking cubicle. You've got your, wall, your bed mm -hmm. against the wall, and you've just got like a few things that just kind of just fucking nailed well, down. I, if you look at I saw that movie um, First Man like a few yeah. months ago or whatever. Um, and it sort of touches upon how physically robust you have to be to be able to withstand so many things about space. You have to be like peak physical condition. You have to be mentally so put together. Because yeah. um, there's like a scene, there's no spoilers or anything, but they put you in those like um, G-force things where you're like sat in... Spin you around. Yeah, it spins yeah, you like around. Yeah, like fighter pilots do as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. And it's just... I could never do it. <laughs> it looks insane. And, and in, the, in the event that something really bad happens, you have to be able to control really complex equipment while spinning around like a mm. maniac. It wasn't there something like, um, I don't know if you guys said this, but like you have to do, like fix a problem in like one breath, otherwise you mm -hmm. just you, you fucking die, that's it. Yeah. It's like, how? How, did, how can anyone comprehend that? Like, oh, this, this hyper-advanced fucking rocket's about to explode. I need to do something. I've got one. Oh, yeah, I wonder how these, these professions like being a pilot or an astronaut or whatever. You have to be so you have to be so patient and so calm in mm -hmm. the most stressful situations. It, does one learn that kind of skill or are they just naturally born with <coughs> it or what? No, I would say, um I think things like patience and stuff is kind of learned through experiences really. Like now I c I'm I can be incredibly calm when shit's going wrong. But I don't know how I'm like that, but it's just kind of... It's like, imagine if you're an astronaut and you've never been into space and it's your first time going in to, like... You've done the simulations, but it ain't like the simulations because it's real, you know? And you, your life is in... Sometimes in, you're, have it, like, in charge of other people's lives as well, like, based on what you can do. <clears throat> that's why they do the amount of training that they do. Though. Yeah. Like, they're, they're not going to send someone up there that's doubting themselves in any way. Nutty, man. You have to be a certain breed of human to be able to do that shit. Like, you have to be born without any issues in terms of confidence yeah. or anything like that to be able to just be able to handle the pressures from it. I would not be a good fucking astronaut. I don't think any of us on, from Jar Media would be good right, astronauts. No, I would. Now, Jim could. But I'd be like, let's fucking drift it, boys. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you can't not drift in space. Except it's, it's a fucking perfect drifter's land. There's no, there's no feedback, though. It's just... <laughs> Well, no, because if a spaceship's <laughs> kind of moving that way, it's like, woo. Um, so we wanted to talk about this um, funny thing that happened in the UK. Um, yep. This comes from... It does come from the Daily Mail, which obviously is an yes. awful tabloid newspaper. Um, so take, that, take this with a grain of salt, I suppose. But The dog accused of a hate crime after foul fouling outside a home. This is a really badly phrased article. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. The dog accused of a hate crime after... Listen to this. The dog, dog in capitals, accused of a hate crime after fouling outside a home in just one of... This is, unbel this is actually unbelievable. Like, trying to read this headline. 
It says outside a home in just one of two comma five thousand cases. Did they mean two thousand five hundred cases? Let me see. L- look, <laughs> that is an, an absurd. Hebel- I'm gonna have to find another one. I can't believe how poorly written that is. What does that even mean? What does it mean? Two out of. Look, James. <laughs> This is the, the I Daily Mirror. Can't right? work. Yeah, I actually, I was. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not being a goober. That's a that's a bigger number. Than yeah, that that's two comma five thousand. That's twenty five. That comma is in the wrong place. That comma. That's not a number. It's just twenty five thousand racist. Is that a typo? Is it supposed to be twenty five thousand or two yeah, in five thousand? I'd say that's a that's a typo. Oh, it might. No, be. no. It yeah, it's it's supposed to be two thousand five hundred, but yeah, they just good. fucked up colossally. They put two thousand five thousand. <sighs> just pre- I'm gonna go on the mirror one instead. Dog accused of racist hate crime for fouling outside a house. It's not hard, yeah, yeah. Daily Mirror. Yeah, or the other one, whatever. They're all the fucking same, aren't they? The unfortunate canine is one of 2,500 alleged hate crimes investigated over two years by the Metropolitan Police. Yeah, that other one was a typo. A typo, yeah, 2,500, yeah. yeah. The dubious allegations... I'm like, th- this is unreal how bad their grammar is. The, dubi- the dubious allegations uh, was investigated by the police in... 2015 and 2016. Who writes this shit? Do you not even need to get, like, GCSE no, English? No, we've actually <laughs> noticed that quite a lot recently of newspaper articles are just fucking... I could do better and I failed English. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the point is, a dog did a poo on someone's... On someone's lawn. So on a bit of grass. Was it someone's house. lawn? It's outside someone's house. And... They went to the police and... They went to the police and... Said it was a hate crime. Yeah, said it was okay, a hate crime. Okay, there's... I say there's two issues here. There's a person who owns a dog and the person who had... Who uh, reported it? The person who reported it must be some hyper lefty if they're reporting a dog for hate crime. Well, yeah, because they're straight it's, up, it's that's ridiculous. It's not like there isn't already a law that's supposed to a suit claim that yeah. that's an illegal act. It's like a thousand pound fine. It's a fucking massive fucking law. You know what I mean? So instead of just getting that person done for that law, they made it about waste. A dog did a poo, and that's a racial incident. Who are they saying did the hate crime though? The dog. The dog and not the The dog was charged. The dog for doing something that it's just instinctively needs to poo. Okay. I think, personally I would say it's it's not the dog's fault, it's the person who owns it's fault. The person who owns it should have picked up the poo. But I mean either way it's not a hate crime. No, it's not a hate crime. That's... The The dog's not doing it. There's a bit more detail, should I read it? Yeah. Yeah. In the dog fouling incident, the log read, an unknown dog has fouled outside a victim address and victim perceived this to be a racial incident. In another case, it was suggested a barking dog was a hate crime. Police wrote, suspect's dog barking at victim. (laughs) I didn't realize dogs had the intellectual capacity to be able to even perceive what a hate crime is or even act on such. They're colorblind anyway. It's, it's, it's clearly this is clearly very telling of our society if people are actually thinking dogs can be wasted. This, we have some strange laws in the UK. What to do with this? Just things like this. It's like that's you can't charge a dog for a hate crime though. Dogs can't hate. But what what's what's the definition of a hate crime? Well, it's <coughs> not a dog taking a poo. Should, do, 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 does a hate crime not? It needs isn't, to be isn't very... already covered by a different type of law anyway? Because if you if it's a if it's a if it's a hate crime that ends in some kind of violence, then it's already going to be charged as yeah. being you know an assault or whatever. From yeah, all the... a hate crime is a crime motivated by racial, sexual, or other prejudice. Right, a dog can't be prejudiced. So, but what defines you know? So it's it's like. If I, it it says that it's normally violent, so if I slapped just a random person, right, 
and it was believed that it was because they were a woman. Okay. Then that would be a hate crime. Right. But it's also... But yeah, that also assault. is... Yeah. That's why I don't understand why do you need two laws for the same thing. More Maybe it makes it more severe, yeah. Must be. I don't fucking know. I ain't no cop. It's, it's, very, it's a very difficult thing to sort of r apply law to. Like, people can verbally say whatever they want, as horrible as it may be. Yeah. But... We don't have the freedom of speech here. We don't have a sp freedom of speech law, no. And that's, well, if you say something hurtful, it's a hate crime. I suppose so. Do you think it's better to just have a freedom of speech law? I think it's necessary. I think people are, are a bit too quick to jump on the... The government should... Should tell us what we can and can't say, sort of thing, you know? With a hate crime law, it's a bit like... Okay, obviously the hateful people deserve some kind of... I don't know. Yeah, but I mean... When it comes to speech, I think the... I mean, especially nowadays when you can just record someone being racist towards mm -hmm. someone else. Their justice should be that being put on the internet, and then it will be harder for them yeah, to get so a job. I Yeah, so I don't see why the government necessarily has to take action yeah, when their that. entire life will just be ruined anyway if it's that's that prevalent if you know what I mean yeah I don't know it's a, it's a tricky one anyway I only see when it comes into force when there's like people out there where you know we do have it in our society where there's like there's extremists and the, these people basically you know recruit for their extremism by basically hate crimes like they should be that that's when the the, the law should be enforced is when this person is actually causing danger and influencing thousands of people from their hate. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's that's when it should be an issue and it should be a legal law where you're going to jail. Not little things which are just kind of nothing. Well, it's just like... Statistics are very hard to break down because it's like... If there are 2,500 alleged hate crimes um, from the Freedom of Information request is from what that data is from, but how many of those are like real serious? Like, it's just such a strange, is, nebulous concept to try and apply it's, law yeah, to. Yeah, it's such it's subjective. So one person yeah. may think something is way more severe than another, which is the point of laws to make it concrete. Mm -hmm. But if but you then you like can just that, call that, anything that a hate law crime. isn't concrete at all. No. But yeah. Where where does when does that kind of thing begin and end? Is is my question. Yeah. Like, if you treat, is it a hate crime to call someone who's, like, really overweight, like, fat or something? Is that... Well, if you think, dog think taking so. a poo is apparently a hate crime. Like, that is so, so loose. And there are other ones, like, there are other examples in this article. Like, um, blah, 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 including an envelope that had been opened and resealed. That was a hate crime, apparently. A disputed line call in a tennis match was a, <laughs> a hate crime and a dead rat found in a garden was a hate crime. Police also logged a man telling library staff he was campaigning for Brexit and an accident involving involving a car that bore a remembrance poppy were all hate crimes. It right? just seems like there's a lot, there's quite a few cases where it's just like people use it as an excuse to kind of, because they can. Like but with those guys those, in, in uh, America for that. What was it? What restaurant was it where they refused to be served and they pulled out the race card? Chipotle. Yeah, it was yeah. in Chipotle. Like that incident, that that that's something completely separate. But my only opinion is on that is that it shows how society is. If a company's, it's giving power to something that shouldn't inherently have like. No, power but but is it, are, isn't some companies supposed to investigate into it instead of just fuck off? Oh, we're back. We're in the wrong. Oops. Yeah, man. That's the power of race now. And that, and I'm just going to show that that's a privilege if you use your race to try and get other people fucked. So just to add to that bit, have you, have you seen what else has been in the newspaper? Um, if we're quick. There was a seven-year-month-old puppy. So you know what puppies do? They buy everything. It, yeah. it, it, it ran away from home and just nipped a police officer. Dog was confiscated under Dangerous Dogs Act. There was a Fuck massive petition to get a seven-month-old puppy back. 
But that, that's when they're teething. <laughs> exactly. It's just the amount of bites I got from arguing. If, if, a, pu- if a cute puppy ran up to me as a pl- if I was a police officer and bit me, I wouldn't... I'd club it. <laughs> I would not fucking confiscate. I'd be like, okay, he's a puppy. I'll, 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 he's adorable. I'll stroke him and I'll find his owner. I wouldn't fucking confiscate the puppy. And it was a chow chow, which had the really fluffy kind of ball one. So it's kind <laughs> of... <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, this is the part of the show where we answer questions from the Jar Media community. The Jarmy out there. Salute. Salute. Nice, nice. So if head over to the Jar Media Reddit and there's a suggestion thread you can leave your questions in. The first question comes in from Yummy Anal Rupture, who says In Jarcast 99, <laughs> Alex talked about how he stopped taking a certain drug which made him have nightmares, memory loss, and made him have mood swings. Oh, that's weed. Nope. I wanted to ask if all of those symptoms disappeared since it was 11 months ago. Um, they're talking about the propranolol. Uh, what I have. Yeah, I think we both would, had a thingy for it. Yeah, I, I, You don't take it regularly, though, do you? I don't take it at all. Yeah, I that, have. Back I have then, a I was taking still like two tablets a day. Or it's, 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 a, it's an anxiety, basically, pill to help. It's actually, it's actually heart medication. Yeah, but they use they it give it to people who have, like, sensitive hearts. To, to slow it down. Yeah, to slow it down. Hmm. To be honest, I never noticed my heart rate go down with it. It didn't really do anything. It did for me, for sure. Um, I haven't taken it for a long time, but no, I don't have. I definitely don't have the nightmares anymore. Um, my memory's never been the greatest, anyway. Um, but not, not comparative to how it was. It's way better. <coughs> um, and mood swings, I don't know. I'm not always moody. Uh, mood swings are kind of a, a quite a uh, common. What's the word? Well, yeah, Sim- not so not as extreme. Side effect I mean, of, of quite a lot of compared. drugs. Did you have mood swings? You did, didn't you? Yeah, back then, massive ones. Yeah, it's horrible. Would not recommend. I've, I I remember in like school, I used to always have mood swings in my gym. Like, yeah, you used to always say that it'll be like. Just being a teenager, though, wasn't it? Yeah, Somewhat. mood swings aren't great, but. I had my t- my teenage mood swings when I was like eight. <laughs> yeah, you're a pretty laid back teenager. <laughs> I didn't give Jim's a fuck. been laid back since he was like quite a long, time. <laughs> like eight years maybe. Sit Comparables asks: Would you rather become the opposite sex or the opposite sexuality? Oh. I'd rather be the opposite sex. Wait, so you either become a lesbian or a gay man? No, it isn't. You become a girl. For us, or you either become a girl or you become yeah. But you become gay. but you become a girl with your same sexuality. So you're so no, no. I think or do you do you no. end up being straight as a girl or straight as a man? I think you're or gay as a man. It. Yeah. The question is, would you rather change sex so you're the opposite or change your sexuality? Yeah, but but that's implying if if you change sex. No, then you become not. gay. No, no. Because then you're then you still are attracted to women. I don't know what you're talking. No, he's about. not. How do you not understand what no, I'm saying? I, I I understood it perfectly fine. No, no, I understand it. The and question you guys is don't. simple, yo. It's just no, the, so you turn into a girl. Yeah. And then you're attracted to men. No, that's not involved. It's just. No, I, but listen. <laughs> if you remain straight and you turn into a girl, then you will be attracted to men. So either way, you're attracted to men. Okay. 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 If, Okay, would I either like no, ch- surely if I if me, my brain became a woman tomorrow, but then I'd you'd probably be, still like women. But then you'd you'd be becoming gay. So either way you go gay. Okay. The, so my answer the to the question is I don't give a fuck, like Okay, uh, if I had to change sexuality or my sex, I'd become a girl. And that's that's predictable. Yeah, you you've always wanted to be a girl. Yeah, I'd quite okay, like not- to see what it's like to be straight. I'd like I, <laughs> I'd go gay. Yeah. What if What if I'm bi right now? Um. Then it's just. Do you want tits? <laughs> <laughs> what? If you're bi right now and you become a woman. No, I mean if I'm bi right in, right now. Oh, I and see. I choose for the second to change bi. sexuality. Do I become straight gay? Bro, bro. Jim's making it far more complicated. Yeah. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'd go gay though. 
Because then I can I can pretend to be straight and get a really good job still. What? What? what are you <laughs> straight, gay people? Straight white good... men are the most privileged, right? If I change, if you become gay, if what? What is Jim? What, what are you talking you about? On about? <laughs> are you saying gay people? Are, no, don't I'm get saying they're discriminated against. What currently? Yes. So you want to become gay so you can? No, because if oh I change, God. if I change to a woman, I can't pretend to be a man. I could, but it would be way too much effort. If I if I turn gay, then I can pretend to be straight or just not talk about my sexuality Why, at all. What are you even saying? And become the what, CEO. No, I'm of pretty Microsoft. sure. What the fuck is he saying, James? It's like <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> He's gone off the fucking rails. The <laughs> you guys just don't respect me. <laughs> I do respect you completely, unless when you start going on about. No, but can you agree with me on my first point? R- which one? Break <laughs> down slowly what your first fucking uh, point did. was. <laughs> so. The choice is between switching sexuality, oh my God. yes, or switching gender. Exactly, where you stay the same. Right. So if you switch gender, you're becoming gay. No, because <laughs> you, if you, if I'm straight now, I'd be straight as a woman. Yeah. So you'd so you'd be <laughs> into men. Yes. So but either, I'd be a woman. So, so either way, gay, so be either way, you're attracted to men. <laughs> you but don't have a, a choice in. What? That's not becoming gay, though, is it? No. No, it is becoming... What, if you're attracted to women as a woman? That is being <laughs> no. gay. No, we took about... What? If, if James became a woman, like, and just became a woman, and, like, and guys... Yeah, but then is attracted to women, he's become gay. <laughs> no, it's like no, guys, because attracted, attracted, if if he was attracted to guys. <laughs> no, yeah, then he's attracted... <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is, no matter what you choose, you're getting a dick up the, up the arse. Well, but what, if you're, what if you don't like anal, yo? Everyone likes anal. True. <laughs> So you're, what you're basically saying is, no matter what the equation there's, there's is, it always wrong ends in dick. With being attracted to dick. No, we're not. We're not disputing that. We're disputing <laughs> why that's <laughs> even relevant. It is relevant because what if you want to be attracted to women? You have no choice. In you, this. you change. You change. You do have a choice. If then you'd be a lesbian. No. No. Yeah. No. Which means you've turned gay. Which means you've changed sexual- okay, sexuality. Okay. Okay. Oh of three of us here, there's three. There's three situations. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, we we change sexuality where then you'd like girls, boys. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, boys. Then, okay, then we'd be attracted then, to men. Then you can go gay where you'd like men, or you just don't want to do either and you still like girls. So there's what if you become you a want? woman and you're bi? Then you like both. Yeah, that that's I can understand that. If I'm bi right now, and I go to a girl, then whatever. But if I'm straight right now, <laughs> and I change to a woman. Then I have to turn gay. I want to I remain... see the transcript of that just to try and understand what the fuck. He has went been off said. on one to the point where it made Do you no not understand sense what to. I'm saying? I actually no, do I understand now. Yeah, I do. So, what, wh- knowing that, with that knowledge, which do you choose? To become straight. Right, next question. Miller Vavan says, Who are your first owners? Um, first owners? First owners. First owners. <laughs> what? What? What is this question? Mine is uh, pyrocynical. What? What's the question? I don't fucking know, yo. Are we Mine... talking about persona? <laughs> no, I just become... persona. I don't have You're... one. I'm not a furry. No, but what? <sighs> oh my god, James! Just if you were a furry, what would your persona be, yo? Mine would be that. You're gonna have to explain what that is to those listening. Fucking duck. You'd be a duck. No, I'd be that duck. You'd be that duck. I'd be that duck. You'd be that duck. That's his name, he's Dat. That. These. I'd be his YouTube channel, Dato Does Destiny. (laughs) I'd be Dato Does Destiny then. So I become pyrocynical, Jim becomes Dato Does Destiny, and James, you become. Michael Michael Buble. Michael Buble? I suppose he is an animal. Fucking sexy animal, let's be real. <laughs> yeah, humans are animals. Why can't I just dress like another person, yo? Exactly. Because they're not furry. Some of them are. Um, I definitely am. <laughs> Thou Hoodied says, Hi, I've been developing a Jar Media Hotline Miami 2 mod, and I'm nice. wondering if you had any ideas for, s- for a storyline you'd like to see. 
Thanks, boys. Okay. Um, so we get lost in the woods. Yeah, someone has to be lost. In Who's the woods. Lost? No, but how does James that... is lost. James how does that lost. fit with Hotline Miami, which is like sh- killing people? Well, we're going to get there. Okay, continue. That's the motivation for why the the, char- the playable character is going somewhere. Um, James is lost in the woods. No, because they might not have a skin for the. They don't need. We never need to go to the woods, but that's where James is lost. So we're heading towards. So no, he's... it's just James disappears one day. We're following his trail, and everything is indicating that he's in the woods. Okay. But then, what what justifies murdering a bunch of people? <gasps> um, they're following James's trail because they want his golden pussy. His golden pussy. Basically, what you're saying James, is James. James accepted the question and became a woman, and that <laughs> thereafter his golden pussy. So basically, what grissy, you're saying and is, and they will do anything to get that grissy. <laughs> so basically, James is being hunted by a mafia or something for his golden pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, yeah, because, yeah like a, a gang, because they want to use James for as, prostitution. As, as, as a prostitute. Yeah, to my just golden make fuck tons of money because people can't get enough of the grissy. <laughs> What's the, the like opening crawl? Um, you know, like you know, like in Cobb when you die, it's got like a quote. Yeah, the grissy was too powerful. Something, <laughs> something like that. The desire for puss, for grissy was too powerful because <laughs> you would have got killed by the people having the desire. What? Yes, dog. And then it ends with finding James, and he goes, <coughs> "Yes, dog." Yes. You get to experience my golden pee. It turns then it turns into I don't um, know anything about Hotline Miami, so you never seen gameplay. I've well, seen gameplay soundtrack. But like dog <laughs> So that's that's a loose framework you can expand. Yeah. So Akpan Studios has a more of a story about I think last episode we talked about how we met someone because he because of Jar. Right? You remember that? Nope, I can't remember. You don't remember that? Wait, where? What? Oh, when? someone met someone because like of a girl. Oh, right. I thought you meant we met someone. Oh, no, like, no, no. Yeah, you worded that poorly. Yet again, Alex. Yeah, <sighs> good job, Alex. Sorry, I just write for the Daily Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Akpan Studios says, The good story continues. Last Saturday, the female and I were at the park. Just don't call t- a female that sexist. Last Saturday, the... The person and I... <laughs> We're at the park just talking about stuff, and she asked if I wanted to go to her house, and I was like, hell yeah, baby, let's go. And so we went to her house, and we are sitting on her sofa, and things start getting heated after watching some TikTok memes. I do the classic yawn thing where I put the arm over her while yawning, and she took it well, and we started cuddling. Oggy, I swear to Christ! Started cuddling. Then all of a sudden she asked if she wants us to go to her room, and I'm like, all right, cool. So we went up to her room, and then we started making out, and afterwards, I can't for the life of me remember why, but I called her my little Dibby, <laughs> and she asks, what the fuck is a Dibby? <laughs> so now I was explaining its history, and I started talking about IG and Jar, so thanks to you, not only do I have a GF, but I also got a GF who knows about Jar and IG, so I'm basically in heaven. Thanks again, Akpan. Page, I'm, I'm looking forward to what happens in yeah, the trilogy this is, now. this is becoming... One you look, what, right. three years down the line. There's a baby. Yeah. The jar baby. <laughs> it's na- they name the kid Dibby. <laughs> <laughs> um, yummy Anal Rupture asks... You... I swear it's the same people who ask the same questions. When will, when will Ruben emerge from the crystal dimension? Um... Like a no week. He's, hold, he's holding that goddamn dimension together with the power of his... His, his, his grissy. Not his grissy. Ruben doesn't have the golden pussy. He's, he's got, got the, the... He's got the golden booty, because he's a twerp. <laughs> 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 his beautiful booty is twerking that dimension into safety. <laughs> Jesse OS says, What's the biggest misconception you had about adulthood you had as a kid? Uh, that it's not fucking epic. What, to be an adult? Yeah. Would you rather be a child? No. My bi- my biggest misconception was the diet. The diet? The diet. You're gonna have to expand on that. I thought it's... adults just didn't like sweet things. Or at least not as much. <laughs> right. And as a 21-year-old alpha male, 
I can confirm that donuts still delicious. God damn, donuts are delicious. Holy fuck. I don't think I, I had any. Yeah, you did. I definitely didn't. There's nothing I could think that it's just like... <laughs> Was it me or you that thought... It must have been me. That... In sex ed, when they taught it, a, a boner was a literal bone going into the willy. You told me that to try and fool me. I... I have a feeling I knew that because in our, in our like, year six sex ed or whatever, they, um... They asked, does anyone have any questions? And someone genuinely asked, is a boner when a bone <laughs> goes into your willy? It's like a fucking, it's like a gun. You put it, you put the new ammo in, use it, <laughs> fucking pull it but out But of course, being a year six, I was like, oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> is that what dinosaur bones are? They're just the, the bones that are in the willies of dinosaurs. That's not adult, that's not like a misconception about adulthood, though. Yeah, it is. You have an erection when you're, like, fucking eight. Yeah, but you don't understand it. And? The, uh, it's not... That's that's a misconception of biology, not I would adulthood. say that is a, mis a misconception of adulthood. No, you're completely incorrect. No, if you're if I'm right, say, Alex, goddamn, you're right. Why does and he if, do this? And if, and if Jim is right, say... If you're Jim. an independent thinker, say whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, if Jim is... If you think Jim is right, say... I'm an independent thinker. <laughs> I think what I want. Shut the fuck up. Basically. <laughs> basically, I'm right. Can you agree with me there? Yes, basically, Jim's right, but at the end of the day, being an adult is fucking epic and I would never go back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shumalu says, what's your favourite film of the year? Mission I watched Impossible. Mine. I watched mine the other day. Um, with Jim, actually. What was it? I'll let Jim answer first. The Halo 3 cutscenes uploaded to YouTube. Nice, nice. Mine is the... So far, I've still got a bunch to see before the year is out, but uh, the new Coen Brothers Western that's on Netflix. The the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Is it Excellent like... movie. Hew! It's awesome. It's like an anthology movie, and I normally like don't like anthology movies. Not a fan of Wreck. Not a fan of loads of... Sorry, not Wreck. Um, VHS. Um, anthology movies like that. So I was a little bit worried when I heard about the premise, but they're all awesome. Yeah. And that's my favourite movie of the year so far. What else has come out this year? Mission Impossible. Um, Infinity War. So many films. Black Ant Panther. Man. Black Panther is the second, second best for me. Black Panther was last year, wasn't it? Yeah. No. Yeah. It was this year. No, it was last year. How Pretty sure it was the beginning of this year. Yeah, it was the beginning of this year. Hey Siri, did Black Panther come out this year? <laughs> 2018, yes. Oh, what the fuck? fuck? Okay, so the winner is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Oh, that film was incredible. God, I loved Ant-Man and the Wasp. Make the salt shaker go big. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that was epic. Yeah. I mean, w towards the end of the year, we do the wrap-up of all our favourite stuff yeah. anyway, so we'll elaborate on that more then. I haven't seen anything this year besides Infinity War. I haven't played anything this year either. Well, let's go watch Mission Impossible right now then. <laughs> Jingaling Jiblo says Have you ever worried about obsessive fans Or letting out too much information About your private life Mostly the the more you tell The less you have to worry Yeah true uh, Unless it's like your address I think it would be kind of stupid to give your address Yeah where you live um... But like If they know your first name the way you look, then people don't tend to really give a fuck. I, yeah. I was quite worried when you were still hiding your identity. Yeah, because it was it was gradually escalating. Yeah, people were getting weirder and weirder, hunting for just anything on you. Finding like our mother's Facebook page. Yeah. Going through it, trying to find pictures and stuff. Really creepy stuff that's like, mm -hmm. maybe if you're a 13 year old that's just genuinely interested, they might not realize that it's quite well, the, as weird as The weirdest as it is. thing is when they like, send you a message and they're like look at what i found yeah because i used to get loads of like notifications on twitter of just this this shit about you mm -hmm. like great yeah what's your end goal 
It's, it's, they, they almost use it as like a boasting. Yeah, you know, thing. Look what I know about you. Yeah, well, it wasn't great. No, it was lame. I remember the, the turning point was when um somebody like just made this website that was just an image of our house that we grew up in. Oh yeah, yeah. That was that was the moment. Where you like, you weren't even living there at the time. No, but it was like that's that's so f that's too far. Mm -hmm. That's really creepy. Someone even called, I think, their house and stuff. I know I now know how they got the information and did it, but the way they did is creepy as well. Um, how how did they? I'm not going to say here, but I'll say after. But um, no, you'll forget. Someone. That was another thing. Yeah, someone did like an insane one, which I'm al almost like just for the pure um, lengths they went to get information. Managed to get this picture of me from when I was like 17. Yeah, the one from from a, from a school from my school newspaper. Yeah, which is so obscure. Of course, there are. He's probably like a private investigator, <laughs> like hired. Yeah, to do it. hundreds of people going in and out of schools. Yearly, mm -hmm. just countless newspapers, and they somehow managed to find the one that I happened to be in. That was when I was like, "All right, I've just got to do something now because this is just ridiculous." And ever since doing that like joke, uh, face reveal thing on Colossus Crazy's Twitter at Christmas mm -hmm. time, yeah, it just, just disappeared. It's good. Way prefer it. And of course, being here, people can come see me all they want. <laughs> I, I, I've never, if you don't have anything to hide online, your identity is worthless. <coughs> you yeah. are worthless online, you're worthless online, I'm right. worthless online. No. <laughs> Not in a mean way, but if, <laughs> if, if, if there's videos of you beating up children, <laughs> for, okay, your identity online is going to be worth something to someone. To 4chan, yeah. But it's just like, it could get you in trouble. Nobody's, n none of our identities are going to get us in trouble. That's well, why you blow out your number plates when you're doing 120 on the motorway. <laughs> well, speaking of James, I got my first parking ticket today. Wait. I haven't had one. Yeah. And you got one. Yeah, I got one. Because I went to Chippenham the other day. Um, parked. Because I looked on an app beforehand to see where I could park for free. Because it was at yeah, like... Yeah, they, they exist. Yeah. It, was at, it was at like 9pm. So I was like, oh, that one's free. That's good. Go there. Don't even think about it. Just leave my car there. Because I just thought it was free. Today I get a letter saying I was supposed to pay um, 60 quid. 60. And if I don't pay within 15 days, it's 100 quid. Wait. It's creepy as hell, man. Like, we really are a CCTV like nation. We, we are the most... I had no clue there was even CCTV watching, but it has, it's creepy as hell, man. Like, in the letter, there's a screenshot of, um, like, the car driving in with me, like, at the wheel. <laughs> we are they the Photoshop it to make you look really evil. <laughs> they, we are the most CCTV nation in the world. We've got more CTVs, CCTVs it's like, per person. God, you guys are fucking dicks, aren't you? Any, any way to get that a bit amount of, cash. of money as well? That is ridiculous. Sixty smack. And it was an empty car park. I was one of the only cars there. <coughs> Just at like nine p.m. at night. Mm -hmm. and I was so there for two hours. It's it's cunt. It's cunty. It's like. They're doing it over nothing more so they can put more, f more fuel in their fucking Lamborghinis. <laughs> it's just a fucking con. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I've gotten in more trouble than you so far. You, you've car. been caught by the community speed watch mm -hmm. and you've got a parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> My insurance runs out in four days. Woo! Can do burnouts outside Alex's house now. <laughs> Um, Dylan132471 says, What do you guys normally do while listening to music? Tap dance. Recently, I'm always driving. Yeah, I driving, music, going from A to B. Yeah. There's a lot of it. Um, or... Doing the dishes. For me, I like to multi-layer how... Um... I like killing two birds with one stone, effectively. Right, so let's say I am doing something like cleaning up, like taking Argy for a walk, doing things that need to be done, but adding a bit, a little bit of spice to them by listening to music or a podcast. I also do, I listen to a lot of music while editing or um, 
that kind of thing. Yeah, walking. Background noise is sometimes good. It's like it adds to the atmosphere and it makes things better. Yeah. Um, walking. Jim is such a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> um, Moon Duck One says, "What Madagascar character are each of you?" We've gone over this. We've had this question before. I feel like, I mean, if it's us, people clearly want to know the answer. But they should know. The Seven answer. people have voted that one. Ruben is Gloria. Yeah, Ruben's definitely Gloria. <laughs> um, um, I'm Alex. No, I don't know. Because you're kind of Melmany. I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> I do secretly want to fuck Ruben. <laughs> yeah, that as well. James absolutely doesn't. James is... Jim, you're, you're the main penguin and James is Kowalski. <laughs> James is not Kowalski. James is the one I'm... who goes, Let's go. Yeah, the Cockney one. You two just are both Let's abusers. Let's go, Skipper. If you yeah, do that one. again, I'm going to get you done for hate crime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. Skipper. <laughs> That'll be a great article, won't it? Some shittily phrased article. Guy from Place gets hate crime because penguins are Madagascar. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, say you didn't see anything in the pe in the. I can't do it. Voice. You didn't see anything. Oh, fuck. I can do Melman. I want to fuck your ass, Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> Is he the giraffe? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Imagine a giraffe mating with a hippo. It happens in real life all the time. Just like how I witnessed a zebra, a grown zebra, <laughs> picking up a baby zebra with its mouth and dunking him and drowning him in a river. Wait, what? Where? <laughs> On Twitter. It's just a, it's just oh, a right. zebra. Pulling a, a, another a baby zebra's legs off and then drowning him. <laughs> That's horse shit. <laughs> I'm not. That's it's horse not... shit. Ah. James, there's a question here from um for you, James, from In Trade, who says this one's for James. I noticed there aren't enough car questions, so I got an epic one for you. Oh yes, thank. Oh yes. What's your opinion on the RX8? I personally think they're underrated and quite good cars, so long as you treat them right, since they're a rotary and all. Plus, I want to get one, and I know a lot of people hate it, but you're a Mazda guy, so I'd like to hear your opinion. Okay, okay, okay. RX-8, it's the bigger version of an RX-7, which is a Mazda sports car. They are dog sheep, because the engines are the fucking shittest thing in the world. Great cars, really bad engines, you can pick them up for a couple hundred quid. But they're, they're, the car itself, the chassis, is really good for modifying and racing. Really great car, but it's just bad engine. But if you get one... My respect, because I've also thought about buying one. <sighs> it means nothing to do with you, but I gave it. There you go. I'd say it's a uh, driving mid to low seven out of ten. I'm really not familiar. I'll show you a picture, and you'll be like, "That car looks cool." No, no, Alex. Actually, stop. You know, I said I was going to get that car that has the doors like your car. Yeah. It's a Mazda RX-8. So. In conclusion, do it you like the RX-8? Yes, I really like them. It's so, just, so you're with this guy? I'm with this guy. Are they guy. underrated? Yes, because the chassis, the car itself, everything that makes the car right, kind of move, really, is really good. It's really well designed. It's like a really good car for, like, as a driver's car. It's just got the engine isn't reliable, so you have to treat it a certain way for it to do anything. I see, I see. Well, with that, we're done here, folks. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Um, this has been the Jar Media Postdoc, episode 141. Uh, if you want to support the show, head over to Jar Media Patreon and um, leave, leave a comment, a, like, leave a comment, and subscribe, leave a comment or two, and leave us a review on. Remember iTunes. to hit that bell so you get told whenever, whenever James uploads a video about how he's he's, he's blew his car up. Now to do a video about Fallout New Vegas. <sighs> Was a wow. End the podcast. I'm done with this shit. I'm going home. <laughs>